Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at a premium Italian heavy cruiser. This is something slightly different from what I'm normally looking at. Uh, this is the Gorizia, the brand new tier 7 Italian heavy cruiser. Now uh, the Gorizia was a Zara class, and this is a ship that actually existed, which makes me really excited because I finally get to talk about stuff that really, really happened, rather than stuff that happened on a paper somewhere. So uh, this was uh, a ship of the Zara class, and the Zara were the successors of the Trento class. They were built in the 1930s, and they were meant to be the he most heavily armored cruisers at their time. Of course, they were built within the Washington Naval Treaty, so they had a 10,000 ton limit, which was a bit of a problem because armor is heavy. So the Italians decided to ditch whatever they could and uh, effectively breach the Washington Naval Treaty and make these uh, give, give these a reasonably good armor plating. So these things had actually somewhat serious for a heavy cruiser belt armor of about 150 millimeter and uh, were equipped with 203 millimeter main guns as it speaks they're heavy cruisers now one thing that really stands out here is that the zara in the tech tree line actually has torpedoes whereas the gorizia does not and the gorizia is actually more historically accurate because the zara class did not have torpedoes because torpedoes are heavy. And what the Italians were trying to do was to, well, not <laughs> have them weighed down by anything else, but uh, put it all into armor. So uh, that, that's actually quite, uh, quite nice that this is the more accurate version of the ship as it really existed. Now, uh, during the, she, she was busy during the war and mostly in term in things like convoy duty and various uh, scu scuffles with the British. Uh, she tried to hit the war spite at some point, but missed. <laughs> and in the end was bombed and, uh, and scrapped after the war because the damage from the bombing was just too severe. But uh, it, it's really nice to have a ship that was actually existing after all the paper ships that I've been looking at recently. So let's uh, let's have a quick look at the comparison. Let's begin actually between the Trento and the Zara because the, uh, the the Trentos were built for speed and not for armor, whereas the Zaras were a departure from that, which they were slower, they were heavier, like more displacement, but they were also have more heavily armored. So let's compare the two very quickly, and as we can see. The Zara gets a damage reduction of 9%, whereas the Trentus gets one of 6%. So that's probably where our heavier armor goes. Now, heavy armor is in big air quotes here because, uh, well, <laughs> it's still a cruiser and battleship uh, armor piercing will and can and will hurt these things. And uh, there we see also the speed reduction that comes with the higher displacement of these things. Now they met, uh, they list the displa displacement here at eleven thousand tons, and I think in reality it was more like fourteen thousand. It always depends if the ships are actually fully loaded or not. The British, especially, were notorious for finding intelligent ways around these sort of tonnage limits, where the standard displacement question comes up, and uh, they they did they did some very sneaky things around that. Uh, in order to squeeze as much out of these as they could. But the big thing that we obviously want to see is how does the Gorizia compare to the Zara, her sister ship? The first thing that stands out, well, obviously this is a premium ship, um, she gets a different loadout. So uh, the Zara comes with two fuel smokes and two precise aiming, whereas the Gorizia comes with two fuel smokes, two rapid reloads and two sonars. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> How does how, what else are the differences? Obviously, that she's given a Zara, given that she's a Sarah class, the the hull looks exactly identical. Uh, she is a tick faster and has better has a better turn time on the rudder than a Zara, and that is already much appreciated because uh, twenty nine thousand hit points is nice, but the armor isn't really there to back that up. I mean, we're in T seven, so it's kind of okayish. Uh, the guns 
are technically the exact same, exactly the same guns, but they do get half a second faster base reload. Other than that, they're completely identical. The torpedo tubes are, well, as I mentioned, actually absent on the Gorizia because the Gorizia didn't have any torpedoes. And in, in, in honesty, neither did the Zara. Just in game, we're actually getting the Zara from an early design where they still had the torpedoes on. So this would have been even more in breach of the naval treaty. The AA on the Gorizia is better on the long range, but worse on the short range. And honestly, I'll take that because um, the short range, with one, point, especially with 1.5 kilometer, really only comes into effect when you are under active air attack by a carrier, whereas the long range AA with the 3.3 kilometer range can actually be used even if the carrier is attacking a ship nearby. So this is a good thing. And the concealment is slightly better as well. Now the main, or the, the, when we're talking about gaming, <laughs> the main practical difference obviously is that the Gorizia doesn't have any torpedoes. And in, she's, she's a little bit like a Belfast in that regard. She doesn't get any torpedoes. Now, the, it's not that the Italian cruisers get a lot of torpedoes, but the torpedoes on the Italian cruisers have a very long range and have extremely good torpedo angles and oftentimes can contribute well, a significant amount of damage because they come around as surprises oftentimes to, to enemy ships that didn't quite expect torpedoes coming around from that angle or that range from an Italian for, uh, from a cruiser. The other thing, obviously, uh, on Italian cruisers, and this is something that you, if you're new to the line or to Italian cruisers in general, will have to learn, is the ammunition choice. Now, historically, the 203 millimeter uh, guns, as far as I know, didn't actually have any semi-armor-piercing ammunition. They only had high explosive ammunition and armor-piercing ammunition. But uh, in-game, we have AP and SAP on these guns. Now, you do have to learn the difference. Um, the semi-armor piercing has a lower penetration than the armor piercing. It does more damage though. So penetration wise, SAP is between high explosive. It, it, may, it has better penetration than high explosive, but worse penetration than armor piercing. It does more damage than armor piercing though. So it's kind of a little, like a little bit of both, which means you really need to know which, what to use against what. The armor piercing on Italian cruisers is very powerful. So oftentimes it can be more beneficial to fire armor piercing at enemy cruisers and battleships. The semi armor piercing on the other hand is excellent against destroyers because while the, um, the, the AP shells will absolutely over penetrate destroyers at close ranges, the SAP shells have enough penetration to do full damage on destroyers even at long range and at the same time don't have enough penetration to over penetrate destroyers at close range. So the SAP makes these ships absolutely brutal against destroyers. And um, having a rapid reload and the Hydro at that actually makes her an, an even more effective destroyer hunter. So, which is not something you generally would think of a heavy cruiser with a 10 second base reload. And uh, generally you, you'd be right. But uh, the gimmick with the semi armor piercing is that you effectively get the mechanics of a 150 millimeter armor piercing gun, but with a damage of almost a thousand points at tier seven on uh, on the semi armor piercing gun. So that's a that's a big difference there, and uh, we'll 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 show that a little bit in more more in details as we go. But first, let's have a very quick look around the ship. So as we've said, no torpedoes. You get uh, two choices for. Um, for the elite bonus, you can either get main battery traverse or you can get main battery reload. And I have gone with main battery reload, which also gives us a little bit traverse. Now a 7.5 degrees per second base traverse isn't great, but we'll, we'll, we'll check that in a second when we look at the modules. You don't actually get anything, well, really useful otherwise. You could take the main battery mod two, which gives you a bit better reload and then take the traverse as the elite bonus, the thing is, with the, uh, that way around, you are trading also uh, uh, turret survivability and your turrets get damaged much more easily. So doing it this way around means we're taking the reload from the elite bonus and we're taking the turret traverse from the, uh, from the module. I actually have both steering gear mods in here. You could use the uh, propulsion mod one, but I tend to play this ship mostly at long range because she is rather squishy 
and uh, if you need to get closer it is very good to be able to shift her swing her around very quickly and once uh, once again as i mentioned her her uh, rudder shifts actually her base rudder shifts better than on the zara so what does that get us that gets us a ship that does 32 knots and has an 8 second turn time which is okay for an, for a for a heavy cruiser this is a similar setup um, except for the turret traverse that i would have on my german ships as well uh, the, the time to full speed on 16 seconds isn't great, but most of the time you're not really going to be slowing down and accelerating all that much anyway. You can use that for kiting and dodging, but um, especially if you're firing at battleships, you don't really want to be at extreme range. If you can manage, being at mid-range gives you much, much better uh, chances to do something with the armor piercing. Uh, we got the turret traverse up to almost 10 degrees per second, which is above American cruiser levels, so that's definitely workable. And yeah, torpedoes are conspicuously absent, which brings us to the captain to the captain build, which also means that the uh, given that the skill set is rather unique here, it's not necessarily a captain that you can easily use on the other uh, on the tech tree line. But uh, I do have the battlefield support for an additional sonar, uh, because with three sonars, I don't generally don't really have a problem with uh, spotting torpedoes, and it makes for a more effective destroyer hunter because you can, if you're close enough, spot the destroyers in smoke. Artillery maintenance, no question here. Victorious charge, same, because we don't get the defensive AA. Uh, fire supremacy, yes, for an additional rapid reload, even that, though that means, as usual, trading survivalist. I do have the recon skill instead of the exploit weakness because we have neither torpedoes nor high explosive shells. And yes, I think, I'm pretty sure it works even if you're not the one setting the fire, but um, I like the faster cooldown on the Hydro and it combines well with the battlefield support. Then fully prepared. Uh, you'd probably want Adrenaline Rush, you could take it, but you don't get any torpedoes. So it's kind of just like one out of four that you get out of that. You could also take this extinguisher in return or the Mist Weaver for a, um, for a faster cool cooldown, although you only do get two of the fuel smokes. And um, as usual, the standard Italian captains actually don't have a, a skill in uh, tier 11 that would affect the semi-armor piercing skills. There is a legendary captain that does that, but the standard captains don't. They just get the standard high explosive uh, uh, and AP penetration skills. So that's a no-brainer. If you have one of those, you would use the armor piercing cap shell for better AP penetration, which given that you mostly be firing AP at battleships at mid-range, and uh, the SAP only at very, very close ranges, if you can reliably target bow or stern sections, then uh, it, it would make sense to take the armor piercing cap shell. Okay, what else do we have to look at? Um, let's have a quick look at the battle honors. I mean, it's it's a premium ship, so it's free stuff. Uh, you play <laughs> play ten battles and destroy two enemy cruisers in the battle. Uh, she, she's a tier seven, so she does give steel. So that's what you get out of that if you're working your way towards something like the Thundra. Uh, that, I think that was steel and titanium or something. So that might work. The historical camo. Uh, given that it's tier 7, it's not outrageously expensive. And you get hit points, range, uh, large caliber AA range. As we've said, the large caliber AA is actually stronger on this ship. And um, increasing the range is also good. Torpedo damage reduction, honestly, nobody really cares. Especially that it's at 6%. So, yeah, you take it, but meh. Uh, you're in a very maneuverable cruiser with a with a hydro. You shouldn't be the only time you should be ta should be hit by torpedoes is if the if there's a carrier that's focusing on you. Otherwise, you should generally be able to avoid those. All right then. Um, well, yeah, as as usual, we'll we'll sail with uh, seaborne assault over here, and uh, just to you know, uh, just just to put that out there because if I don't know, nobody's ever, nobody's ever asked why I'm doing this. But um, obviously I'm, I'm playing on the press account and I have unlimited resources more or less. And I could play with um, a historical camo and a 12 point captain if I, if I was so inclined. And with premium uh, consumables for repair and, and uh, uh, damage control. But I want to play the ships in a way that I think the majority of people are going to have them set up. So if you're like a... You're free to play player, or you're just a player who likes to, um, you know, you have has spent a little bit of money on 
uh, on, on the ship, but doesn't necessarily want to spend the additional 2,500 gold and doesn't happen to have a captain around and uh, who's who's up all the way in 12 points that he could reset for the ship. So I figure I'll, I'll, I'll play them like probably the majority of people would play them if they get them. Uh, now, I'm not criticizing anyone saying who, who doesn't do that, and I, I do the occasional maxed out video that does the same thing. But um, just for regular reviews, I'd like to get, give you an idea what you can expect, how can how you can expect the ship to perform with an average everyday setting. That's why I'm doing this. Anyway, enough talking, let's get into some gameplay. Our first battle takes place on Southern Archipelago. It's a domination battle. We're mostly... Yeah, no, we're top tier. It's it's a tier 7 battle. So we've got Lyon, New Mexico, Belfast, New Orleans, Akatsuki, Fubuki and Eigel to play with. Um, yeah, if you're in a destroyer and you see one of these things, uh, run. <laughs> because not only... Well, she doesn't have any torpedoes, so you could rush them. But uh, it's extremely dangerous because A, they have fuel smokes, B, they have hydros, so they can see you in your smoke. Uh, they are reasonably maneuverable if set up the right way. And the semi-armor piercing, and they've got rapid reload for the semi-armor piercing. So, <laughs> uh, like, like an SAP salvo from one of these things can easily do, I don't know, 7,000 damage to a destroyer in one salvo. And you get the reload down to, whatever it is, 6-7 seconds with the rapid reload. Uh, that's not something you really want to, <laughs> you really want to experience when you're in a destroyer. So, um, by the looks of it, the team split is working nicely. It looks like no, there's no lemming train, so we're going for D and B, and the enemy destroyers are going for A and C. And I'm going to help out the Aka and uh, Galicionier over there, just in case they run into more than uh, they can w deal with. And it looks like one of the battleships is following along, whereas the other one is going over. Uh, it's very risky to do a full team push on one side here because um, you're because of the delay on getting the other capture circle because if uh, you will you will eventually well the enemy team will just move through on the other side which which sorry which means you have them in um, in a cross uh, they have you in a crossfire plus they will get three cups to your one okay that's Belfast so let's start opening up with this guy because this was this is one of the uh, players that I had flagged as dangerous, plus it's a Belfast, they're generally not not fun. And uh, let's see what we can do something about these destroyers and use our first rapid reload. Because the uh, Galissonaire there is a little bit alone. And uh, obviously the Belfast is probably going to join the fun at some point as well. So as, as much damage as we can do to the destroyers early on is good to see. Alright, there's the Belfast starting to shoot at us. Now, I know where he is, I can see him. And uh, unfortunately, at this range, the uh, oh, there's also New Orleans. Okay, so I can't push into that. At this range, the semi-armor piercing is going to struggle to penetrate something like a Belfast. Uh, it's, it works sometimes, but you're not going to get like um, like Citadel City coming in, right? Still, they do more damage than um, than the actual AP shells and. Uh, if if they penetrate, but you you do get bounces. So I'm I'm switching over back to the um, uh, back to the actual armor piercing, not the semi armor piercing, while dodging the dodging some torpedoes from one of the destroyers here. And uh, the Belfast has run out of smoke, so I'm gonna start uh, I'm gonna start uh, shooting at him again. Unfortunately, I've also got a New Orleans shooting at me, and at this and as the armor piercing as well hasn't been super effective at 10 kilometers. This is a bit of the problem. The Italian ships are mid-range, uh, mid-range ships. At extreme ranges, you're gonna have to, you're gonna find it difficult to penetrate. So that Galissonier there needs to needs to be a lot less aggressive. I think he should have stayed back a little more. Uh, he's in right positioning, but he is getting rushed by a Nakatsuki, So I am going to help out with that thing first. And he's noticed, and he's using armor piercing. So it's definitely a very good player there. I am drawing fire again. And uh, the Akatsuki is wildly wiggling, so I'm using my first fuel smoke, just to uh, just to draw, uh, just to get him done for and not be <laughs> shot at by the New Orleans. But it looks like the New Orleans is actually um, a nice dodge from the Galissonier. Uh, the New Orleans is actually not uh, shooting at me, so we've got the broadside of a Belfast to shoot at. At close range, once again, I would I would switch over to the armor piercing. But um, uh, at this range, it looks like the semi-armor piercing 9 kilometers is a little bit too far. Uh, 
it still does decent, still can do decent damage. It's 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 tricky. It's a tricky choice, really, uh, between these two when you're shooting at things like cruisers. At uh, at close ranges, it's a different story. At long ranges, uh, they're they're relatively equal, and the semi armor piercing has the has the higher has the higher uh, has the higher alpha damage. So hopefully, we can get this thing now killed um, because we are one kill behind. Oh, come on! He must be on like zero health. How is that thing still alive? Come on, someone kill it. Okay, Belfast killed the Galissonier. Ah, oh, damn it! I thought, sorry, buddy. I thought I had him. Otherwise, I would have probably stayed on target here. But uh, one, sal one more salvo out. Where is he? Okay, he's right next to the island. So there's only one place he can be. He can be broadside in the smoke screen at that position there. And I think the Bayern has the same idea. So he is dead. That is some good uh, blind fire here. Okay. Uh, Fubuki is coming in, but uh, we've also got New Orleans problems, and I am running reasonably low on hit points. So, uh, just uh, get, just getting the Hydra up, I mean, Bayern has a Hydra as well, so he should be able to see him. Uh, Bayern shooting at him, and yeah, see, this is what you can do to a Fubuki. <laughs> if you are, if you're getting your shots on target. The torpedoes have been spotted from a mile away, so hopefully nobody should be running into these. Which means uh, we're still behind on points, we're one kill behind, but um, and it looks like our other flank has completely collapsed, even though we actually had a lot of ships here and there's only three of us. Well, there was four of us, so yeah, fair enough, I guess. Um, but yeah, the other flank has collapsed and um, now I'm, I'm close to a New Orleans. I am um, using, using my smoke again to turn around and as you can see, the... Uh, I'm trying to see if I can actually get full pens against that thing with the semi-armor piercing. But um, uh, yeah, the AP would have been a, probably a better choice because uh, like striking a citadel even on a flat side New Orleans at this range with the semi-armor piercing isn't really going to happen. So while the, the alpha damage is higher, the penetration isn't there to punch through the citadel. This is what I meant with you have to pick your, um, you have to pick your ammo choices. Now, uh, at, at, at this range, once again, uh, armor piercing and semi-armor piercing probably doing about the same. And uh, I am seeing there's a battleship in front of me, so I just want to get that New Orleans killed and then I'm going to back up. Oh, uh, how are we on points? 590 to 5... Okay. So we are ahead on points, but just so. So uh, I'll get one last salvo and see if I can see if I can kill that Fubuki from over here. But then I'm going to stop shooting and try to dodge the fi incoming fire because these guys... Oh, he dodged. That's a shame. That would have killed him. Um, because these guys are going to try and kill me and uh, because uh, we are only six points ahead. If they do manage to kill me and um, the Bayern doesn't manage to kill somebody else and in New Mexico, I think, is reasonably high on health. Okay, the Gneisenau kills the Leon. Well done, Gneisenau. Well done. So even if I die, and I am dead here, yeah, uh, well done. So Gneisen now saves the day, and uh, that was just enough uh, to to make it over the line. Had to have a hard fight here. <laughs> so in this battle, if I had had torpedoes, uh, things might have ended up a little bit differently. So especially a fight like against the New Orleans, I would have uh, killed him quicker, and I would have been on point quicker with the uh, with the destroyers. So. Uh, you definitely do feel the absence of torpedoes. But uh, let's do another one and see if we can get ourselves some battleships to shoot at. And we're back on Aurora this time in base capture mode. Uh, once again, it's a tier 7 battle. So New Mexico, Ismail, Bayern, New Mexico. Don't underestimate battleships and what they can do to you with their armor piercing shells. Uh, we've got one Algerie and two destroyers to deal with. So let's go. We actually have a Nelson on our side, but we have a failed platoon with a New York and a Fuso. So the New, uh, New York has got himself into a tier 7 battle. Fortunately for him, all the battleships on the enemy team are tier 6. So that probably balances each other out. Okay, um, anyway. The first thing we're going to do is uh, we'll loop, we loop the eastern end. We've got a T-61 here, but I want to make sure that none of the destroyer sneaks around uh, and uh, this, this is a very, very common thing to happen uh, because there is going to be one destroyer spawning left and one destroyer spawning right on the enemy team and the the eastern spawn destroyer is... it's, it's very tempting for them to... yep, hello. <laughs> it's very tempting for them to go... Um, 
to go down this route here and uh, you know just just try to drop some sneaky torps into the battleship line try to try to threaten the cap and generally just uh, throw the whole thing into disarray and we've got two destroyers on the enemy, on the other side i would have liked to be a, for a cruiser to be there as well to deal with destroyers but uh, well i can't be everywhere so it's it's a it's a gamble you make and i'm going to support that t61 here and see if we run into one of the destroyers and if uh, if anything else comes around here then he's got torpedoes and i can i can still run away okay one destroyer spotted i can't quite see it on the map because of all the pinging if the other destroyer is there as well but i think he is so both destroyers are actually on the other side which is unusual but we've got a new mexico to shoot at so we might as well do that and uh, against battleships i generally switch over to the armor piercing uh, it's not that the semi armor piercing doesn't do damage, but um, uh, it's the ideal range for shooting at battleships in this thing is somewhere around like eight kilometers, and um, because you can abs you absolutely can citadel, especially the uh, l less heavily armored battleships, quite well with the armor piercing at that range. New Mexico is shooting high explosive at me for some reason. I have no idea why people do that, but um, yeah, be my guest. And uh, you're not doing a huge amount of damage, but it, it adds up and it's only a tier 6 battleship. But at this point it looks like we have a little bit overstretched because everybody starts shooting at me and there are definitely some battleships that are firing ar armor piercing. So uh, I'm not going to push into four, four, what is it, five battleships there. There's Fubuki, so I'm just going to back off. And yeah, you've seen that uh, once we get into like 8 kilometers, we're starting to get full pens with the armor piercing. Uh, the Italian armor piercing heavy shells are very, very dangerous for battleships. Uh, okay. T61, you have got hide. Oh, he ran into all those torps. Damn it. <laughs> well, not into all of them because he would have been dead, but um, does he get hydro? I'm not sure. Anyway, I think he has now um, caught the attention of everyone. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go suicide with that. It was a good approach, but unfortunately, the enemy destroyer has been paying attention. Now, we have achieved our goal in not have the Fubuki push up here. Was it a Fubuki? But unfortunately, at the same time, our T61 is now somewhat in trouble. Um, he might be able to... I mean, he could take on a Fubuki, but the Fubuki's got backup. So I'm trying to distract people as much as I can from over here. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing that succeeding over there. And the T61 is running very low on health. So I think it's about time to do a bugger off. The Icarus has joined the fun here. And is donk donking torpedoes, plus there's torpedoes coming in from the other side, but I think they are not going to have range. And the New Mexico is still firing high explosive at me, which, um, once again, allows me to give broadside. And uh, I'm not really going to do... Uh, now, these torpedoes look good, so that's probably the New Mexico dead. Let's see if they have range from the Icarus. Uh, yep, they have, and that's the end of the New Mexico. Well done, Icarus. Uh, we've looped, we've uh, doubled back a little bit, but we have lost one battleship and we've lost the T-61, unfortunately, which means we're one kill behind. Uh, okay, there's some torpedoes coming in. So, battleship there, whatever that was, uh, New York, you, you've seen these, right? Also, you're in a tier 5 battleship, what are you doing pushing in? <laughs> uh, okay, well, be it. So, uh, Algeria, obviously, after our destroyer and uh, that wisely uh, wisely smoking up so i am once again switching over to the armor piercing and at this range if i'm lucky i should be able to get uh, to get a citadel on the algerie uh nope no luck but I'd, i'm getting full pens i'm smoking here and i'm dodging just in case the algerie has torpedoes away but i've got the hydro up and that should be the end of the algerie so back to the semi armor piercing because we have ourselves a vesteros to shoot at now nope, the vesteros is actually running away well let's see if we can dunk some shots into him anyway and then we're going to help out on the uh, on the western end because we're bleeding ships very very quickly. The Vestros has just killed the Fubuki, and dodged most of my shells, unfortunately. Which means we're down to three ships actually, three against four. We we can still do this. I think the um, the New York has suicided. Uh, I'm not sure if that was if that was him who died there or if he's still out there. But we now have an almost full health Ismail, so we definitely want to use. And I, like I said, this is this is ideal uh, range here. Seven kilometers. We want to use the armor piercing. So over to the AP, uh, semi armor piercing into the stern, but it doesn't do a huge amount of damage. Now this thing, uh, deck armor, not great. And at this range, I've got the perfect combination of of height. There you go. 
and uh, of penetra remaining penetration and of, of Ango. Now, once again, he's shooting high explosive at me, which is much appreciated. And you see these shells coming in from the top. Uh, yeah, they're going to hurt. So this is a good range, um, actually a little bit too close for my liking right now. So I am going to have to actually open that up a little bit. But it is a decent range for doing damage with the armor piercing. Now, uh, one of our battleships is uh, unfortunately trying to kill a destroyer over there, I'm not sure. But um, we've got some good communication going on here and focus fire, so we should be able to get that Ismail down at least, to even out the score maybe. Um, there's another Citadel, and he overshot most of them, but uh, it's a dangerous range to play against battleships. That's for sure, for sure. So you do have to play a little bit with your your speed and uh, especially with your positioning. But he's nicely on fire. And uh, maybe we can get... He gets a little bit too far away for the armor piercing to become effective. But uh, uh, maybe we can still get him down. I mean, we're running out of time here. Oh, no, there's another Citadel on the plunging. So, yeah, uh, this is what I'm saying. With uh, Italian cruisers with armor piercing against... Um, Especially against bottom tier battleships, and there's a Bayern. I mean, the Bayern is a German battleship, but we can still do things to it if we can hit the deck armor. Um, and once again, it's the magic distance of eight kilometers, and there's another citadel. So you, you are going to do um, very reasonable amounts of damage with this thing. Now, uh, it looks like we've lost the other battleship on the other side, so we're not going to get the Bayern killed in time, I think. And um, if we if we did, we might have won this, but I think we're out of time here. Uh, yeah, we're out of time. So, yep, that was very, very close, but we didn't quite make it. And the Vestros actually takes uh, takes the cake on the enemy team. But as you can see, you can, even if you're up against battleships and you don't have any high explosives, you can do a, a very significant amount of damage if you're playing at the right ranges. Uh, the, the, the penetration degrades very, very quickly towards the end longer ranges but if you can play somewhere between six and eight kilometers that's uh, that's a range where you can actually citadel battleships especially bottom tier battleships so like if you up against tier eight battleships it's a different story right but um, bottom tier battleships you can definitely definitely citadel at that range anything more heavily armored you're gonna have to start switching so experiment with uh, sinking armor piercing or semi armor piercing shells into bow or stern sections of battleships and see that you're not going to sit at anything there, unless it's a lucky shot from the front through the transverse bulkhead. But uh, you're going to do full penetration, and we don't have uh, damage saturation sections on in Blitz, so that's not an issue. Uh, otherwise, um, disengage, find yourself something else to shoot at, and be useful to kill destroyers. So, uh, is this a is this a great premium ship? Um, I don't know, it's not bad, but um, I think the main advantages over the Zara are the slightly better uh, the slightly better traverse and obviously the rate of fire. But you do know you do need to know what you're doing and choose your ammunition correctly in order to get well the biggest bang for the buck out of out of that thing really when it comes to when it comes to that. Um, the absence of torpedoes does hurt a little bit. Even though they are not uh, particularly, even though you don't get a lot of them, but I quite enjoy the, especially against battleships when you're brawling, I quite enjoy having this the extra set of torpedoes. And you can get six torpedoes in on target if you just turn the ship around. Uh, it is definitely useful in um, just raw DPS and getting things out. And you still can do a reasonable amount of damage with the thing. So that is the Gorizia. The tier 7 premium Zara class uh, heavy cruiser that actually is historically accurate. That's it for today. Thanks everybody and I'll see you next time. Bye.